Tonight breaking news, the Hunter Biden trial begins. The first lady there in court to support him. In New York City, two NYPD officers shot and wounded. News on the suspect and breaking news on the border with Mexico. What President Biden plans to do and the shark attack off the coast. The swimmer punching the shark to survive. First tonight, Hunter Biden's gun trial begins. The first trial of a child of a sitting president. The first lady there in that courtroom. Also developing President Biden preparing a new executive order, a crackdown on the Mexico border. It would shut down the border immediately to asylum seekers if daily migrant numbers hit 2,500 and what we're learning about this. In New York City tonight, those two NYPD officers shot and wounded, chasing a robbery suspect. One shot in the chest, saved by his bulletproof vest. What authorities have now revealed about the suspect. This major heat wave already building tonight. Temperatures well into the triple digits across several states and the wildfire burning in California. The swimmer attacked by a shark off the coast, bitten on the chest, arm and hand. Witnesses on how the swimmer survived. Israel's war with Hamas tonight. The Israeli military now confirming the deaths of four more hostages in Gaza. Here in the U.S. tonight, the heated testimony on the Hill. Dr. Anthony Fauci defending his handling of the COVID pandemic and Fauci turning deeply emotional when revealing the death threats against his family. The accused serial killer outside New York City, the new report tonight indicating new charges could now be coming after this newest search of his home. And after 41 seasons of Wheel of Fortune, the final week for Pat Sajak. Tonight here, the interview with Sajak by someone he knows very well. And what he says when asked, could you have kept on going? From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening. It is great to start another week with all of you at home. We do begin tonight with breaking news on the U.S.-Mexico border, what President Biden now plans to do. Also, two NYPD officers shot and wounded. We have news coming in on the suspect. But we start tonight with the trial of Hunter Biden on felony gun charges, the first child of a sitting president ever to go to trial. Twelve jurors and four alternates were seated today. Hunter Biden arriving at federal court in Wilmington, Delaware, along with his wife, Melissa Cohen Biden. First Lady Dr. Jill Biden there to show her support. His father, the president tonight, sending his boundless love to his son. Hunter Biden is accused of lying about his drug use on a federal form when he bought a handgun in 2018. For years, Hunter Biden has been open about his drug addiction and his fight to beat it. Tonight, prosecutors now plan to use Hunter Biden's own words against him. ABC's Terry Moran leading us off at the courthouse tonight. Hunter Biden walked hand in hand with his wife, Melissa, into the federal courthouse in Wilmington, Delaware this morning to stand trial on charges of violating federal gun laws. Minutes later, First Lady Jill Biden made her way into court on her 73rd birthday. This case marks the first time in American history that the child of a sitting president has gone on trial. Hunter Biden faces three felony gun charges in what prosecutors are calling a simple case. They allege that he lied about his drug abuse on this federal form back in October 2018 when he bought a Colt Cobra 38 special handgun. For years, the president's son has been open about his fight with drug addiction. That I've made mistakes in my life and wasted opportunities and privileges I was afforded. For that, I am responsible. Now prosecutors plan to use his words against him in court, including excerpts from his 2021 memoir, Beautiful Things, where he came clean about his addiction and his text messages. This one allegedly sent just two days after buying that firearm. I was sleeping on a car, smoking crack on 4th Street and Rodney. Hunter Biden's lawyers have argued in court documents that that form is confusing, and so their client did not knowingly lie. Last year, a plea deal in this case fell apart under tough questioning by the same judge who will now preside at trial. The jury selected today six men, six women, including a man whose father died by gun violence and whose brother was sentenced to prison for drug crimes. A woman who grew up in a hunting family with guns and whose best friend died from a drug overdose. And a man who has owned six guns in his life and told the judge, I believe the Second Amendment is very important. Earlier today, President Biden released a statement standing by his only surviving son, saying in part, I have boundless love for my son. In court, Hunter Biden has been an active participant, conferring frequently with his lawyers during jury selection. And he's been an attentive son, checking in on the first lady at one point during a break, embracing her with visible emotion. 
Opening statements in this case begin tomorrow morning. David? Terry Moran leading us off here tonight. Terry, thank you. Meanwhile, there is a developing headline tonight involving the U.S.-Mexico border. This evening, sources now say President Biden is preparing to take tough executive action on immigration, including shutting the border. When the number of asylum seekers reaches 2,500, it would trigger an immediate shutdown. It comes tonight as the new president of Mexico, their first woman president, a physicist and engineer, has already signaled she will work with the U.S. on immigration. Rachel Scott at the White House. Tonight, President Biden preparing to take his most aggressive action on immigration yet. The plans to issue an executive order to effectively shut down the border to asylum seekers when migrant crossings surge. Sources tell ABC News when daily encounters reach 2,500 between ports of entry, asylum seekers would be turned away. The move could have an immediate impact. Migrant crossings have averaged 3,500 a day in recent weeks. The president, keenly aware that immigration is a top issue for voters, has been weighing on how he can act alone. After Donald Trump urged Republicans to block a bipartisan deal their own party negotiated. There's no guarantee that I have that power all by myself without legislation. And some have suggested I should just go ahead and try it. The U.S. has seen a record 6.4 million illegal border crossings during the Biden administration. Officials say the numbers have dipped in recent months because Mexico is cracking down on their side of the border. Viva Mexico! And the U.S. will soon have a new partner. Mexico tonight electing its first woman and first Jewish president, Claudia Sheinbaum, the former mayor of Mexico City, a physicist with a doctorate in energy engineering, won the Nobel Peace Prize. Shane Baum is vowing to continue the policies of outgoing President Lopez Obrador, working to control the flow of migrants. David, and back to that executive order, this could have an immediate impact for those who are seeking asylum. The number of migrant encounters at the border already far exceeds that threshold. The White House and the Biden administration fully aware this will likely be challenged in court. David. Rachel Scott with a developing headline from the White House tonight. Rachel, thank you. Here in New York City tonight, news on two NYPD officers shot and wounded while chasing a robbery suspect. One shot in the chest, saved by his bulletproof vest. And what authorities have now revealed about the suspect, a migrant from Venezuela. Here's our senior investigative correspondent, Aaron Kutursky. Tonight, these two young New York City police officers are out of the hospital and lucky to be alive after they were shot by a migrant wanted for robbery in Queens. This is a bullet hole because of this vest. A young police officer is going home. Officers Richard Yerusso and Christopher Abreu, both 26, were shot just before 2 a.m. while searching for suspects in a string of robberies by thieves on scooters. They observed a male suspect drive a moped the wrong way and attempted to pull him over. The suspect then fled on foot. Police sources told ABC News the officers wrestled the suspect to the ground. They were all within inches of one another when the suspect pulled a gun out of a fanny pack and fired. One is confirmed shot in the leg and one in the vest. We have one perp that's shot. Officer Yerusso trying to stop his partner from bleeding. The one police officer shot in the vest was more concerned about his partner saving his life, getting a tourniquet. Detectives recovered this illegal handgun at the scene and arrested Bernardo Mata, a 19-year-old from Venezuela who entered the U.S. illegally a year ago and had been living in a migrant shelter. David, this suspect is wanted in connection with multiple robberies in Queens. He was shot in the leg with the altercation with the officers. Tonight, he's in the hospital awaiting charges. David, Aaron Kutursky here in New York. Thanks, Aaron. We turned out of the major heat wave building tonight, several states with triple-digit heat already. In fact, 25 million Americans on alert for dangerous heat as California tonight already battles a wildfire there. The Corral Fire east of San Francisco racing across more than 20 square miles in the last 48 hours alone. Part of Interstate 580 shut down for a time. Families forced to evacuate. Tonight, crews battling the flames and the temperatures. Mola Lenghi on the fire lines for us. Tonight, a new threat for the West, scorching heat. 475 firefighters already battling California's first major wildfire of the year. The dry grass quickly going up near the town of Tracy. The Corral Fire incinerating more than 20 square miles east of San Francisco in the last 48 hours. The winds were fierce, 30 to 40 mile an hour sustained winds and 60 mile an hour gusts. People were saying, they couldn't even stand up in those high winds. Two firefighters sustaining burns when the erratic winds changed direction expected to be okay. First time I walked over here, 
It was very hard to look at. It still is. Travis Curtis's parents evacuating as flames closed in on his childhood home, now destroyed by the fire. They left with the clothes on their back. And so... Uh, and came home to nothing. Came home to nothing. The start of the fire, not far from the explosives testing facility, belonging to the famed Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Authorities warning that fire season is now a year-round event. Usually we see the more intense fire activity in July, August, September, so... Uh, we just want everybody to be prepared. Well, David, the National Weather Service issuing an excessive heat warning for millions here in California starting tomorrow, with temperatures expected to hit up to 108 degrees, prompting some real concerns about the heat, not just here in San Joaquin County, but throughout the West, David. Makes those firefighters and their jobs even more difficult. Mola, thank you for that tonight. We turned out of the swimmer attacked by a shark off the California coast north of San Diego, bitten on the chest, arm, and hand. Witnesses tonight on how the swimmer survived this. And it turns out an emergency room physician happened to be nearby and was able to help. Kena Whipworth in California tonight. Tonight, a popular beach just outside of San Diego closed and residents on high alert after a shark attacked a man while swimming with a group 100 yards from shore. I heard this, um, this scream and you kind of know when it's a real scream, like, okay, that's, that's, not a, that's not okay. It was around 9 a.m. when authorities say he encountered what is believed to be a juvenile white shark. Despite sustaining significant injuries to his chest, arm, and hand, the 46-year-old managed to break free by punching the shark. Kevin Barrett, part of that group, just feet away. When I got to him, it was it was pretty evident that you know he was he was in major distress. It was a little scary because um, you don't know what you're swimming into. Morning beachgoers, an ER doctor, and lifeguards jumping into action. Caleb, who regularly trains at the beach, was taken to a local hospital and is now in stable condition. Researchers at Cal State Long Beach immediately taking water samples and using a drone to try and locate the shark, but they were unsuccessful. Past studies have shown 97% of the time people were in the water at an aggregation site, a white shark was nearby. And David, years of research indicates that sharks in the area are anywhere from four and a half to nine feet long. And while bites are rare, they encourage everyone to use caution, especially when visibility is low. David. All right, Kena Whipworth tonight. Thank you, Kena. Now to the Israel-Hamas war. And tonight, the Israeli military confirming four more hostages have died while being held by Hamas. Three of them had been seen pleading for their lives in a video put out by Hamas in December. Marcus Moore is in Israel tonight. Tonight, the Israeli military acknowledging, quote, difficult questions will be asked after the deaths of four more hostages being held by Hamas in Gaza. According to the IDF, new intelligence confirms Chaim Perry, Yoram Metzger, Imaram Cooper, and Nadav Popowell were killed several months ago. We assess that the four of them were killed while together in the area of Khan Yunis during our operation there against Hamas. The IDF has not said how they died. Back in December, Perry appeared in this Hamas video, pleading, don't abandon us. A lifelong peace activist, Perry surrendered to Hamas militants to save his wife, who was hiding in their safe room. We spoke with their son, Lior, shortly after Perry's abduction. Ever since he, he finished being a soldier, he became a, strongly, uh, a, a strong peace activist because he said, it's very clear for me, very, very clear that uh, peace is the only way. Perry's family tonight blasting the Israeli government for not doing more to free the hostages, saying in a statement, he could have been saved, he should have been saved, adding there will be no forgiveness for any further abandonment. This comes just days after President Biden's announcement of a new ceasefire proposal. But Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today insisting there will be no permanent truce until Hamas is destroyed. David, the terrible news on those hostages comes as pressure mounts on both sides to agree to an immediate ceasefire. A State Department spokesman said the only thing standing in the way is Hamas. David. Marcus Moore in Israel. Thanks, Marcus. Back here in the U.S. tonight into the fireworks on Capitol Hill. Dr. Anthony Fauci facing hostile questioning about the pandemic. And Fauci today growing deeply emotional while revealing the threats against his family. Here's ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Tonight, in a contentious hearing on Capitol Hill, Dr. Anthony Fauci choking up as he describes death threats against his family. It is much more troublesome because they've involved my wife and my three daughters. At this moment, how do you feel? Terrible. 
During the nearly four-hour hearing, Fauci defending his record as the face of the nation's pandemic response, facing hostile questions over policies like social distancing and masks. When you and your agency made mistakes, Dr. Fauci, what happened? We all need to be held accountable. Sometimes it's as simple as saying we were wrong. But Fauci defiant, rejecting unfounded GOP accusations, he helped fund research that caused the COVID pandemic and covered up a theory the virus may have originated in a lab in China. None of us can know everything that's going on in China or in Wuhan or what have you. And that's the reason why I say today, and I've said at the TI, I keep an open mind as to what the origin is. David, House Democrats investigating the pandemic say they've gone through hundreds of thousands of documents over the past 15 months. None of them provide evidence that Fauci covered up the so-called lab leak theory. David. Elizabeth Schulze up on the Hill for us. Elizabeth, thank you. We do have a note on the economy tonight and some alarm for a time today when the New York Stock Exchange now blaming a technical glitch for an interruption in trading today. Up to 40 stocks were affected after incorrect prices were listed, including Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway that at one point showed a 99.9% drop. They're connecting the glitch now to an SEC rule change that requires investors to settle their stock purchases in one day uh, rather than two. When we come back here tonight outside New York City, the new headline at this hour about the accused serial killer after this newest search of his home. Also, the longtime congresswoman revealing her battle with pancreatic cancer tonight. And later here, Pat Sajak on his final week on wheel after 41 seasons. And what he's saying now about whether he could have kept going. Tonight outside New York City, suspected serial killer Rex Hewerman could reportedly face a new murder charge. He's already pleaded not guilty to killing four women. Newsday tonight reporting a new potential murder charge following a recent search of his home in Massapequa Park and the search of a wooded area where at least two victims were found more than a decade ago. He could be arraigned on this new charge as early as Thursday. Tonight, Texas Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee has revealed her battle with pancreatic cancer. The 15-term Democrat is running for re-election. She says she's undergoing treatment, telling constituents she will be occasionally absent as she fights this and that she'll be on the Hill for critical legislative votes. When we come back here tonight, the Major League Baseball player tonight who could now be facing a lifetime ban, what he's accused of, and the news on Cindy Lauper tonight. To the index of other news, Hawaii's Kilauea volcano erupting on the Big Island, taking place at a remote area which hasn't seen any activity in nearly 50 years tonight. No immediate threat to people there. A major league ball player is facing a potential lifetime ban tonight for allegedly gambling on baseball on his own team. ESPN reporting tonight, Padres infielder Tucapita Marcano is under investigation for betting on Pirates games while with Pittsburgh last season. Cindy Lauper has announced her first major tour in more than a decade, and she says it'll be her last. Lauper is set to begin in October, 23 cities across North America, starting at New York's Madison Square Garden. And Simone Biles tonight breaking her own record as she hopes to return to the Summer Olympics in Paris. Biles winning her ninth all-around U.S. championship, qualifying for the Olympic trials. We'll stay on it. When we come back here tonight, Pat Sajak's final week on Wheel of Fortune and what he's revealed tonight. Finally tonight here, 41 seasons. He started in 1981. Now Pat Sajak with just a few more spins of the wheel. Tonight, after more than 40 years on Wheel of Fortune, five more spins for Pat Sajak. This week will be his last. My name is Pat Sajak, and I've been fortunate enough to uh, wander onto the set. Pat Sajak retiring after 41 seasons, starting in 1981, watched by generations of families. We have a million dollar winner. But tonight here, Pat Sajak interviewed by his daughter, Maggie, who works on the show and has even filled in for Vanna White. Somewhere along the line, we became more than a popular show. We became part of the popular culture, and more importantly, we became part of people's lives. What made you decide that this is the right time for you to leave the show? I'd rather leave a couple of years too early than a couple of years too late. Could I still do it? Yeah, I, I'm, I think I could for a while. There's also some other things in life that we'd like to do, and I'm enjoying this last year. Uh, it's been a great 40 years, and I'm looking forward to whatever's ahead. You have made what could have just been hangman into a cultural phenomenon. So thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay, so. Pat Sajak with his daughter tonight. I'm David Muir. I'll see you tomorrow.
Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.